Hi, this is Keith Townsend from VirtualizedGeek.com, and you're following the web series for installing VMware vSphere inside of VMware Workstation 10. So in the class so far, we've installed basically four hosts, our VMware ESXi host, as well as our domain controller, and most recently our VMware vSphere vCenter appliance. In this video, we'll be changing the IP address of our VMware vCenter appliance, which is currently 168. I'm sorry, which is currently 192.168.128. And we're, we want to change that to dot 61. Why are we doing, taking a whole video to make that change? We'll see shortly. It's all about certificates. The first task is fairly simple. We want to change the IP address of our vCenter server. So we can do this by navig navigating to the network tab of our control panel. Highlight the port that we're gonna use to browse to. It's not the default vSphere port. After we've successfully logged in, we'll go ahead and change the IP address by navigating to the IP address tab and then entering our correct IP address. After we've entered the correct IP address, we want to make sure we validate that our DNS is correctly identified. We'll also go to our Windows DNS server and enter the uh, a host record for our vCenter appliance. Remember in VMware vSphere, it's all about time and DNS. So from this point forward, we'll use proper DNS names when accessing our VMware vCenter appliance. This is where we run into our first of many potential problems. If we try and log into the VMware vSphere client without rebooting the VMware vCenter appliance, we'll end up getting a authentication error because of a invalid certificate. We'll solve this by rebooting our server, logging in and performing one more step. We'll navigate back to our vCenter server appliance console and we're going to navigate to the admin tab and then the admin tab we're going to select the option to certificate regeneration enabled. We'll submit that change and we'll reboot our VCSA one more time. Once our VCSA has completed rebooting, which can take a few minutes in our lightweight lab, we can go ahead and attempt to log in as root. We'll notice that this time authentication is successful. So while not the most glorious lab, this is most definitely needed because changing the IP address of a vCenter server appliance can be painful. Well, that's it for this lesson. We'll, in the next one, we'll continue the configuration of our vCenter appliance.